Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today, I'd like us to start off by picturing a forest. And in this forest, it's the start of fall. The leaves have turned yellow and orange and they're falling from the trees and landing on the forest floor. Now, I'd like us also to think, what happens to those leaves? Because they don't stay on the forest floor forever. Eventually, they break down. And they're able to break down because of these incredible organisms called decomposers. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Let's get started. Decomposers are very important organisms that break down dead matter and recycle all of that matter back into the environment. Decomposers break down dead plants, dead animals. They even break down poop. And this raises a very important question. What does all of this dead matter break down into? In simplest terms, decomposers break down dead matter into nutrients. They're able to break apart all of this dead matter into small elements that are very important for primary producers to grow and survive. Primary producers are organisms that get their energy from the sun, like plants and algae. Decomposers break down this dead matter into important things like water, and carbon dioxide, but it also breaks it apart into these important nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium, which either end up back in the soil or in water to be used by plants or algae. Now that we know that decomposers are so important because they add nutrients into the environment, let's talk about what type of organisms are decomposers. Bacteria is a very important decomposer that breaks dead matter down on a microscopic level. We cannot see it with our eyeballs. We would need to use a microscope to see it. Fungi is also a very important decomposer. Some types of fungi are so small that we would need to use a microscope to be able to see them, but other types of fungi, like many different types of mushrooms, we can see those decomposers with our regular eyes. If we imagine mushrooms growing in an environment, they're not getting energy from the sun like a plant, they're getting energy from whatever dead matter they might be growing on. If there is a mushroom growing on a rotting log or a tree stump, they're pulling energy out of that log or tree stump while also breaking it down. There are even animals that are decomposers. Animals that are decomposers are typically eating dead matter and they return the nutrients from the food that they ate back into the environment in their waste. Animals that are decomposers are called detritivores, and there are lots of different types of them. Earthworms are a great example, as are millipedes and termites. All of these animals that are detritivores are eating dead matter, returning the nutrients back to the soil in their waste. Okay, so now we know what decomposers do. We know what type of organisms are decomposers. There's one final question that we need to discuss. What would happen if there were no decomposers? What do we think? Take a moment to think about it or to discuss as a group, what if there were no decomposers in any environment? Would anything change? Would that be a problem? Hmm, well, if I really start to think about it, I think we would have a pretty big problem. Decomposers add nutrients into pretty much every type of environment. Without decomposers, there's not, not as much nutrients. Plants and algae are not gonna grow as big or strong or be as healthy. So we know we need plants and algae because lots of animals rely on them for food, but plants and algae also make oxygen when they go through photosynthesis and oxygen goes up into the atmosphere and that is what allows life on earth to exist. If we didn't have decomposers, there wouldn't be as many healthy plants and the world itself would look very different. 
All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope everyone is feeling like a decomposer expert. We have mastered the idea of what decomposers are, what kind of organisms are decomposers. And if you'd like to test your knowledge, be sure to click the link below to visit our website where we have all sorts of fun activities and projects. We also have some fun information in there. We might be discussing why you shouldn't rake your yard in the fall. I'm wondering if that will maybe help any of you get out of some chores this fall. And thank you guys again so much for joining me today. I hope we see you at our next adventure. Bye.